Okay, you guys, so we're going to start a tutorial. And so when you open up Photoshop, um, you should see something where you can find the tutorials. If not, then you're going to have to probably close out of Photoshop, that little red X, and then you're going to uh, quit Photoshop right here where it says quit, and then open it up again, and hopefully you can find these tutorials. So I'm going to start with this tutorial here that Photoshop gives us. And I'm going to look for, instead of photo editing, I'm going to look for all categories. And I'm going to go to get to know the app. That's the first one. So I'm going to click on that, start tutorial. And this is what we got. So right here, I'm going to read what it shows right here. So that um, depending on where you hover, if you hover over that blue box is going to go away. But right here, let's read it. Panels are an important part of the interface. I'm reading this blue box right there. The layers panel is one of the most essential. You can use the layers panel to reorder layers, turn layers off and on, and create new layers, and more. Click Next to continue. So right here, I'm going to click Next. And right here, it says drag the flowers layer that's this layer right here above the woman layer release when you see a blue line dragging a layer in the layers panel changes the order of the images on the canvas click next to continue so we're going to move this flowers layer above the woman like it says right there look what happens when we change that look at the flowers so see how that's changing the layer right there. So now the flowers right here are uh, are on top of everything. But now we can put this behind the woman layer. So there's different like pieces of paper, so to speak, you know. So we'll do that. And now we're going to click next. Now it says click the eye icon to the left of the woman layer to turn the layer off. This can help you focus on the other layers so right here if you want to see what this looks like without a layer without a you know that that photo right there you can click that that little eye so that helps you be able to work on things if you want to turn off a layer and turn it back on so i'm clicking on this eye right here and there the eye uh, the that layer for the woman's gone so let me click next now right up here it says the toolbar is one of the most important parts of the interface there are tools for selecting repositioning and editing images and much more let's check out a few key tools click next to continue so this whole bar right here this is the toolbar okay so we can do some interesting things with it. You guys are probably familiar. Let's go next. It says select the zoom tool from the bottom of the toolbar. If you can't, it's likely because this tool is already selected. And we see that that tool is already selected. So if it's selected, in order for Photoshop that's doing this tutorial to know that we clicked on it, we have to click out of it and back on because see how it's already selected? We can't select it if it's already selected. So in order for the tutorial to know that we clicked on it, we're going to click on something else and back. So I'll just click on this something else. It doesn't matter. For me, I just clicked on the hand. And now I'm going to click back to the magnifying glass, the zoom tool, so it knows. There. Now it knows. Now it says to click to zoom in on the flowers. Click next to continue after I do that. So I'm going to zoom in now if you have a, a wheel on your mouse if you're using that you can move that like this so that's what i'm going to do to center it more so i can scroll up and down on my mouse if i have one or a trackpad i could try that too so i'm using a mouse and my desktop computer here so now it says click to zoom in on the flowers and it says click next to continue and i did that in fact you can see right down here this photo is a higher number than what it was before. And just so you know, uh, you can click, I think it's 
for on the Mac, it's option. And I'm not sure what it is on the the Windows computer, but if you click the the different keys, you can find one in the corner, the left hand corner of the keyboard, where it changes that zoom tool to a minus. And so I can go the other way. Or I can go in this way. Now, if you want to make it so that it shows the whole photo way, the way it is, you can go fit screen. Okay. So I'm going to, again, zoom back in and scroll up and click continue. Now, it says select the eyedropper tool. This tool allows you to sample colors from the image. So we're going to click on this one right there. Now, it says right here, it says, use the eyedropper to select a bright yellow color from the flower. This will change your foreground color. So we're going to change this. This first one is the foreground. The second one is the background. So whatever we click on, it's going to change this box right there. So this will change your foreground color. We'll use this color to paint with in another step. So let's just click on, on a pink part so you can see that changing. See that how that changed? Let me click on a red part. See how that changed now to that color? Let me click on the blue. So whatever that top color is, okay. So I'm gonna find a yellow part to click on because that's what it says, a bright yellow color. So I got the bright yellow color, see that color right there? And then it says click next to continue. So I'm going to click next. Now, it says double click the hand tool to fit the image on screen. Ah, that's a shortcut. Remember I was showing you how to fit on screen the other way with the zoom tool? Now we're going to double click on this hand tool to fit the image on screen. This will display the image as large as possible within the interface. So it will fit the whole image, right? So double click it. So there, I double clicked it two times real fast, and now it came back here like this. Now I'm going to click Next. Now right up here it says the options bar found at the top of the interface provides multiple settings for each tool. So this is the option bar right up here. This is the toolbar. This is the options bar. The options bar will set, uh, change depending on what tool is selected. So right here. That's the option bar. So right now we have the hand tool and right here it's in the options bar. Click next to continue. And right here it wants us to select the brush tool from the toolbar. Notice how the options bar changes to reflect the brush tool options. So I can click on it right here. And notice how this now has changed up in the option bar. Click right here on that number right next to the brush, click to open the brush preset picker to the left of the brush folder icon. So right here, we're clicking on this number. And right here, it says drag the slider to about 500 PX to set the size of the brush tip. Click next to continue. So it wants me to change this number to 500. Now I can do that one of two ways. I can slide it until it goes to the number I want or I can even type it in if I want to be exact. So there, I change it. Now I'm going to go over here to this part and I'm going to click next. Now it says change the blending change the blend mode. Right here's the mode it says change the painting blend mode from normal to dissolve. You're almost ready to paint. So normally it starts at normal. But I had already uh, selected this so now just so you can see, dissolve now it says. Click next to continue. Uh-oh, I painted something by accident. So I'm going to Command Z. A little music in the background for you. Okay, so as you can see, I, I made a mistake here. And I accidentally started painting too early. And what do you do when and that happens? Well, there's a couple different things you can do. On your 
If you have a PC, you can go Windows Z as in Zebra. You hit those two keys and that will undo the last thing that you did. You can also go up here to edit and undo uh, whatever that last one was. You have to go back a couple times. Now, good morning, Falcon. Please stand for the pledge. So here in another place, you can actually go and you can find it in Windows. So I always like to go into the workspace and make sure I have it on photography. If yours is not on photography, set it to photography. And once you have it set to photography, up in here in this corner, there's a little history button. You can also get the history by going to, to Windows and selecting history and keeping it in here. But anyway, I'm going to click that and it's going to come out here. And we're going to be able to see where it says brush tool. So I'm simply just going to go back one like that. And that will take care of it. So that way, there, I got rid of it. So now that we have this brush tool, it's on dissolve. We're going to go next here. Now it says select the layer circle. So I'm going to click on this layer circle clicking on that little thumbnail okay now down here we're going to make another layer okay it says make a new layer by clicking the new layer icon and which one is that it's a little plus you should see a little plus down here little square with a plus in the middle and when you hover over it it's going to say create a new layer so at the bottom of the layers panel, this is the layers panel. So let's click that. And now we see a new layer was formed. Can we see anything? No, we can't see anything. It's transparent. It's clear. Okay. But we're going to actually paint on this layer. So right here, it says brush in the center of the circle, orange circle without touching the, the edges. So we have the brush that's selected right here. We have 500 or close to 500. We have it set to dissolve and we're just gonna paint right in here. And what color is it going to be? It's gonna be our foreground color, yellow. So what does that look like? Like that. And if you don't like it, you can always go in the history and go back one, right? I can always go back to this right there and start again if I don't like it. You can also go Command Z if you're on a Mac or uh, Windows Z if you're on a PC. So again, right in here. There we go. We're going to leave it like that. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. So now it says click the empty box to the left of the woman to reveal that image. So right here, the empty box right there where there is no more eye, I'm going to click on it. And it's going to reveal that woman again. Ah, that looks really cool, doesn't it? So we can see what it looks like with and without something. Okay. We can see everything, all the different layers. So let's click next. And now it says select layer sky so the layer is active and ready to edit. So now we're going to select this layer. And right here it says select the spot healing tool from the toolbar. This tool is used to hide small unwanted items. So let's select that right there. And now it says click to open the brush preset picker from the options bar. So we're going to select this. And now it says drag the size slider to about 100 pixels. Set the size of the brush tip. Click next to continue. So it's already at 100. So I'm just going to go like this, go like this so you can see it. And I can do it approximately. So let's just, whoops, I messed up. So let's start. Okay, so let's just open up Photoshop again here. Okay, there's a little glitch there, but right here I'm, I'm to move this to about 100. 
So I'm going to move that 100. I'm going to click there the, on the top of the bar to kind of close that. Then it says next thing is click next to continue. So now uh, I have that sky layer already selected and it says drag over the two birds and watch them be replaced with sky. Okay, let's try it. Whoa, that bird is gone. Voila. It's these kinds of powerful tools that will allow you to work quickly in Photoshop. Click next to continue. So I'm doing that both birds like that. So now I'm going to click next. And that's it. There you go. And you can save that. Uh, if this is for an assignment for me in my class, you can because we're using Canvas right here, uh, that doesn't give us a lot of space on the free one. So if you're using Canvas in my class, you can you can change the image size right there. Change that to 1,000. And then you can go to File, Save a Copy. You can save it wherever you want. I like to save things in my downloads, but you can organize it more. And instead of go instead of instead of Photoshop file right there, the format we're going to change it to JPEG. And this was the assignment. Get to know the app. Now make sure that you don't delete that that at the end the dot JPG. That's really important. If you erase that, we need the dot and whatever that extension is so that the file works correctly. Then I'm going to hit save and I'm going to change this to eight. We don't need all the way high. You know, we don't even need that high quality. Even a medium is okay. Well, maybe six is okay. This is just for the web. Otherwise, I'd have a higher quality, but even six is probably okay. So I'm going to go okay. And there you go. That's 